what you would want to do is essentially um, destroy all life in the universe. All sentient. We're, we're on the same page there. All sentient life in the well, really all life because uh, for pragmatic reasons because life can evolve into sentient. Um, so if you want to ma minimize the time of sentient life, then you'd want to also probably, you know, you probably want to get rid of the trees too, in case somewhere down the line they evolve sentience. But that's a moot point. So right, really, I don't, I don't think your argument would be contingent on me conceding on that, but sure. No, no, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. But really, um, I'm just saying, like, it's just it's just a moot tangential. Yeah, generally, yeah, as Isaac's saying, you'd probably want to get rid of all matter if you could. Like anything that, you know, could make sentient life, your view would probably in principle just want to get rid of that. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So I'd, I'd probably say, at least for the sake of the argument, I haven't really looked into it or explored that. But yeah, I'd definitely say for the sake of the argument going okay. forward, that's probably yeah. my view. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So now the, uh, the thing I'll also add right now is that that's not a pragmatic thing to do. We don't actually have the technology yeah. to do that. You'd agree with that? Yeah, we also don't have the technology to eliminate all sentient life on the planet. Would you agree with that? Aren't we just like nuke everybody? Is that like a possibility? So that wouldn't work, yeah. Um, so it wouldn't work. Uh, the reason being is you wouldn't actually get rid of deep... Nukes actually are very, very ineffective um, at eliminating life in in deep sea in the deep sea ocean uh the reason for that is because they there's so much pressure in the ocean that the cavitation bubble that essentially that they form is actually not that even large if you were to nuke the deep sea ocean um there's also no evidence that you would be able to nuke the fault lines or whatever um and cause the new extinction event even if they did um, all the extinction events, life still survived, even if it eliminated 90, you know, something like 96% of life. Um, and if you do mess up, then what happens is life will just continue to go on and evolve more sentience and suffer more. And now this time you're not around to nuke it further. Mm, so we don't yeah. actually have a pragmatic way. We don't actually have a technologic way, even if we wanted to as a species, to eliminate all sentient life on the planet. Definitely not all sentient life in the universe, if there is others. Yeah. So there are certain so now that's that's off the table of the available options, right? Um what we can do is we can adjust we can adjust populations. Um, that is something we can do. We can adjust uh, our population. We can limit. We can decrease or increase our population. Would you agree that that is something that we can practically do? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Would you agree that how we adjust our population uh, changes how wildlife population is adjusted? Uh, changes. So, for example, if we decrease our population. Uh, generally speaking, that it would increase wildlife population. If we increase our population, that would generally decrease our population. So we can infringe on other lung wildlife, we can take over their uh, ecological niches. Yeah. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> in the average human life, in the average human, so for example, the average human uh, area of land, like how much suffering is in per area of land if you try to do a calculation. And if we compare that to human life versus wildlife. Suffering way more, yeah. I think I get yeah. where you're going with this. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah sort of, I sort of probably yeah. agree already. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and, there, and there's so, but and it's to such a large degree. All It's like. Like there's so many things that we have trouble with and we have endure sentience. But if you compare that to wildlife, like it's just eons different. Like there, we, if, if we get a disease, we can get treatment. If we get uh, illness, we can get a painkillers. If we have pain, if we get, if we're depressed, we can go to a psychiatrist and we can get antidepressants. Like none of these. And, and also we typically aren't faced with the prospect of being eaten alive. So uh, there's just it's just night and day in terms of the type of life wildlife goes through. Life. And so what I would say is that pragmatically, 
what we probably should do to minimize suffering if eliminating all life is not on the table uh, until the, until the time that it is available on a, a negative utilitarian view, what we probably should be doing <clears throat> is we should be working to uh, minimize animal wildlife to the greatest degree uh, that the environment will allow, unless like the environment has externalities that would cause even more suffering that would be alleviated. And so one very pragmatic way to do that is for vegans especially because that comes with more human life that and less animal uh raising life is to for vegans to breed because if vegans are breeding then we would end up taking over animal wildlife now we would be introducing some suffering into the world by increasing the human population because humans will suffer to some degree however we will also be decreasing the net suffering of the world because we will be taking over ecological niches of animal wildlife. And because we'll be taking over ecological niches of animal wildlife and replacing them with humans, since animals suffer far, far more to such a great degree than humans would, on the net, this action will, in the meantime, before until we get the technology, to eliminate all life on the net, this action in the meantime will decrease the net total suffering. That's the general idea. Yeah, I don't disagree. Okay, cool. So you're a natalist now. Yeah, pragmatically. Pragmatically. Okay, cool. If I had had the capacity to flick a switch and turn everybody off, I would definitely do it. But like what what you're putting to me, it seems to make sense. Like, I don't really have anything that I can contest it with at all. Um, I just say, yeah, like, pragmatically, I'm a natalist. Like, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Wow, that was the quickest anti-natalist pro, uh, to natalist conversion I've ever done. Awesome. And that, see, now I'm convinced that you're serious. You're like, you're not trolling when you're an anti-natalist. Like, people often have this, like, anti-natalist view and then the negative utilitarian view. Uh, and then they like are in the weird conflict when they're given this. Like now, I'm convinced. Like you are a, a genuine negative utilitarian. Like you're the first, like genuine, genuine negative utilitarian. Like who really would accept the entailment. So yeah, yeah. So I agree. Um, it's just yeah. all about reducing suffering. Like there's, I don't think there's yeah. any situation where. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I mean, like I'm yeah. not disingenuous at all. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. Cool. All right. So I'm glad you're in it. You're. I'm glad. Well, listen. I'm glad you're on team natalist. Even if only pragmatically. I think like, yeah, 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 definitely pragmatically. But I think like, you still come back to that same situation where a lot of people, or, you know, from what we demonstrated in the vote the other day, a lot of people would consider even my conceptual understanding of, you know, whether we should be, whether whether it's right to be antinatalist or not, um, is, is still a a question that needs to be uh, I don't surfaced. think we had a, I don't think we had a, a vote about antinatalism. Sorry, pro mortalism, but I think that's I don't just think like we a, had a vote about pro mortalism either. Um, we had a vote about negative utilitarianism. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, yeah. So you're uh, okay. Anyway, yeah. So I just yeah, we're not fighting at all now. I, I I thought that I could convince you to be a natalist, and I'm glad I was right. Yeah. Go it's team natalism, everyone. Go team natalism. I guess every negative utilitarian. Is- negative utilitarian pragmatically needs to be a natalist if it's the case. That, that's I think so. Point. To be honest with you, I think it's pretty clear. I think like, I think if you're a negative utilitarian, you should be, you should have the view that you should really be pumping out baby. Uh, you, you should really, you should be as a natalist as possible. You should be breeding as much as you possibly can to the greatest extent that you could knowing that they would uh, take over animal uh, wildlife animal niches because whatever amount of suffering they would have would just pale in comparison to the animals that are being constantly eaten alive. Shift in paradigm. Yeah, let's do it. All right, cool. Yeah. All right. That's all.